Hey guys, this is Caspi with Tape, and today you join me in Caspi 0.25. It has been released, it was released yesterday, and I'm taking a look at some of the new parts. I never really take a look at the whole update, because other people do that, like Scott Manley and all the media group people. Um, but yeah, these are the new Space Plane Plus, Plus parts, well at least some of them. Um, I've constructed myself a cargo SSTO out of completely stock parts. parts. I have done this before, um, but because there were no cargo bays, um, it was kind of made of weird metal shrouds and you had to jettison stuff, but when I open this up, well, when I right click on this, um, god damn it, this is post commentary, this was annoying. Yeah, anyway, when I open this up, um, you'll be able to see that it is a fully functioning cargo bay. This is the small version, there is a larger one, but I have not had time to incorporate that into my design. Anyway, so there is a little probe in there, it weighs maybe half a ton, maybe a little more. Anyway, yeah, these are mainly the new parts, except for a few wings, and, um, and the rapier engines, and there is a new inline docking port, which I love very much. Oh uh, yeah, if I have not mentioned, these are the Space Plane Plus parts, which were a mod. Um, as you can see, it has a very nice interior in this plane. Um, yeah, these were a mod, um, but they basically incorporated it into the stock game, because the um, it was Space Plane parts really needed work. They were a bit kind of left by the wayside. But anyway, this is an SSTO, and um, yeah, so I'm going to take this to orbit, and take some mass to orbit. And It'll be very interesting, and then I will return it um, because it's it's. I want to demonstrate something else. Um, that not just uh, now it's not just the wings that provide lift. The um, actual uh, fuselage of the plane provides lift as well, like in real life or like if you play KSP with Ferrum Aerospace, which I I tend to. Uh, you can see those weird little bulky things on the side. Those are air intakes, and those uh, well the new kind of um, radial air intakes, and now we have the shock cone air intakes, which look very cool. I have noticed now that I have left my, um, probe engines on, um, I accidentally turned them on, so the probe is out of fuel, so it won't be doing much, um, and will actually make this much easier to take to orbit, I just realised, but it's fine, it, it could take quite a lot to orbit, it has a lot of fuel left over when it's, um, in orbit. Anyway, now speeding into four times time accelerate, because it is a fairly standard flight to orbit, but I thought I'd leave it in, because, um, well, I tend to. Uh, there's also a very nice um, bicoupler at the back now. You can see um, that the two engines are attached to this bicoupler, and that also has fuel in it, which is nice because uh, you do want fuel in these uh, kind of structural parts. Um, and yeah, it's just an overall really nice update. I'm not covering everything, but there have been a lot of things, such as you can now destroy the building. So when you're returning your giant shuttles, do be careful not to hit the buildings, because in career mode you will have to pay to fix them. Um, so be a little careful. And they've also updated a lot of career mode stuff, which I will talk about at different parts of this video. But anyway, we're seriously getting up to speed now, um, getting nearer 1500 meters a second, and soon we will run out of air. Um, but not right now, because those shock cones are very good for absorbing air. Um, so we're up at 25 kilometers above sea level and still going strong, although we're starting to... Yeah, there we go, move over to rocket engines, because we were getting some serious... Um, Serious flame out on one of them, on one of the engines. And there we go, our apoaps is in the right place, but we're still very low in the atmosphere, and I'm not using Ferrum Aerospace, which is what I'm used to. Um, so there's a lot more drag. Um, yeah, so anyway, now we're just pushing our well, we're just um, kind of gliding up, I guess, into orbit. Um, we will perform our orbital injection burn so that we will remain in orbit around Kerbin. Very important. Um, yeah, so let's warp into the day. And there's new, a new thing up there. You can see there's um, where you'd used to recover vessel. There's now an option for space center. And if you're on the ground, recover vessel as well. So it's a lot of nice little stuff. Um, there we go, yeah. I can just shut down those engines. Um, because I want to transfer some fuel into it uh, from our main tank over here. Um, well, that only has liquid fuel left in it. There we go. Anyway, let's put in some uh, liquid fuel and oxidizer. There's no real need for it, but... um. We might as well. Uh, yeah, this is a fairly basic probe, really. Um, just wanted to put some mass in the cargo bay, and it seemed to be about as heavy as I could get it. I'm not fully happy with the cargo bays. I think it's a nice addition. Oh, damn, I've put the probe inside the, uh, inside the docking port, so that will not be left in space today, sadly. So it will be my, demonstra my demonstration for returning payload. Anyway, yeah, as I was saying, I'm not fully happy with the cargo bays, because they are the small ones, and you've got to take a huge amount to orbit. Um, Whereas in stuff like the B9 pack, you have much bigger cargo bays and different sized cargo bays, but it is a nice addition. It has been missing from the game, and now at least it's there. And when people are like, oh, why isn't this in the game? Like when they say, why aren't these B9 parts in the game? Well, you can just get B9, and B9 was made by um, a former developer. 
um, C7 or Chad Jenkins, who is now working on Universe Sandbox 2, I believe. Anyway, I must return this now, um, which is going to be difficult for me because I haven't returned a space plane without, um, uh, well, I haven't, I haven't returned a space plane without Ferrum Aerospace in a very long time. Um, I, I almost always play with Ferrum Aerospace now because I just like being able to do, you know, clever, um, like, uh, clever aerodynamic techniques and stuff, um, and just have a nicer element to the game. So, I'm lucky that I have these engines. Anyway, you can see on the nav ball that there are now different markers. Um, you can see that there are, as as per kind of the old game, there's prograde and retrograde. There is also normal and anti-normal, or the north and south type things. And the ones I forget the names of, I think it might be radial and anti-radial, the um, blue ones, basically, um, that you get on the maneuver node, are now on the nav ball to make a flying and doing stuff a little more intuitive. And there is also an arrow. Um, when you plot a maneuver, um, the, the, there's an arrow on the nav ball pointing to where the maneuver is so you don't have to flip around searching for it. Anyway, time to switch over to atmospheric mode with our engines because I may need to do uh, some engine, some actual, um, I might need to use them to get back because I might fall short because I'm not used to coming back like this. Um, well, Bill, Bill and Jeb look very happy there. However, I have plans for Bill. <laughs> no, but seriously. Um, oh, and now I'll just demonstrate that, yeah, see now um, you can see the arrow on the nav ball uh, pointing to where my maneuver is, which is nice. It's a nice little addition. They've also added some pretty big things to uh, career mode. You can now set up programs to, like, basically sell science. Um, oh, yeah, now you can see the normal and anti-normal. I just set my plane into a spin. Yeah, you can basically um, set up programs to sell science and reputation or um, buy science, I guess. You can... Basically, they've done it in a very nice way, so it's not like you can sell science for money. It's like, um, or, or reputation. You can you can set up programs. It's like to say, um, say, um, what would it be like? Uh, given that you found you have newfound reputation, maybe you could use it to get funding. So you lose reputation points, but you gain you know funds, which is a very nice addition, I feel. Um, and a similar thing with science. Anyway. Um, what am I doing? I, 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 I recorded this yesterday, actually. Um, so I'm not entirely sure what I'm doing there. But I maybe should have... Well, this will be sped up fairly soon and cut through because it is a standard re-entry in a plane. And if you want to see that, then... Uh, well, you'll see bits of it. Um, and, of course, I've done many videos where I re-enter with planes and shuttles that you could totally go and watch. Um, yeah. No, but I do think to, uh, point two five is very nice. They've also added... Um, a button. They've done lots of little things, like new explosion effects, they look very nice, and usually when you press X, it cancels your throttle. Now, if you press Z, it will maximum your throttle, which is a very nice thing. Anyway, I have plans for Bill. Um, I want to see if I can bring him back in that cargo bay, because maybe you have a cargo plane at your station, and there's, say, an asteroid headed for your station, and you feel that... Um, Maybe you'd like to, you don't have enough spacecraft to get all your Kerbals back because maybe your spacecrafts are out on maneuvers or you just didn't have any. Maybe you could put like them all in a cargo bay and you probably put a lot in a big cargo bay. They are pretty big, they're pretty long. Um, but this one's fairly small. I want to see if I can return um, a Kerbal safely in a cargo bay. Anyway, skipping ahead, um, this is when I've ignited the engines and, um, and uh, well, well, I ignited the engines and started to burn up. Um, anyway, as I was saying earlier, the uh, fuselages now provide lift, which is very nice. So I'm working on a Dream Chaser spacecraft, which is this little uh, spacecraft which will be launched on an Atlas rocket. Um, and then uh, then we'll, it'll be able to glide back, so it'll be able to pick out its landing site, kind of like Shuttle did. And Shuttle was somewhat a lifting body. Uh, Shuttle was really interesting when I watched a documentary recently. Um, and it was talking about a lot of things. It was, a voice, it was narrated by William Shatner, actually. And uh, he was talking about how... Uh, the um, the original testing shuttle um, was going to be named after a ship that first brought people to space. Um, anyway, skipping ahead. Um, yeah, I'll just skip ahead a bit, and this is sped up. But anyway, back to back to the shuttle. Anyway, um, basically a lot of um, uh, basically they were going to name uh, the, uh, the 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 the, uh, the testing shuttle after a ship that you first brought people to the U.S. But um, a lot of Star Trek type people, such as myself, I imagine, if I'd been around in the 70s, campaigned to get it called the Enterprise. What they didn't realize is it was a testing shuttle, so it would never go to space. And they almost did bring it to space, but it was actually cheaper to outfit and uh, would build another one to outfit than to outfit this testing shuttle with, um, you know, 
like um, RCS blocks and engines and things. So yeah, um, they were they were probably rather annoyed that it didn't end up going to space. And I mean, the, the shuttle used to you know be tested for landing and approach by being put on top of a Boeing and then just like let off the top, which is a pretty iconic image. And there was some serious worry that it would just kind of take out the tailplane, and you know then you have a, a Boeing headed for a city, and that's probably going to be a pretty pretty. Well, it could be headed for a city. I mean, it could be headed for just desert and probably would be. But, you know, it's pretty dangerous. So you have to kind of control that and then probably bail out. But, um, yeah, it didn't. And it was pretty good. And it was lucky that shuttle worked because it was kind of before we had computers more powerful enough to, um, you know, make proper simulations. So the simulations were like, you know, flywood models um, thrown through air. And you kind of hope to damn sure that your uh, flywood models were good to, you know, test a re-entry from space in a shuttle. But yeah, it all worked out pretty nice. Um, but anyway, talking of re-entry in a shuttle, we are coming back now. And I am um, not much in the mood for uh, crashing into those buildings to uh, demonstrate the new um, explosions. But uh, So I will land on the runway. And it is a little dark now, and the fire has stopped. So you won't be able to see... Um, so, well, you'll be able to see it. It'll just be less fiery. And I probably should have landed in the day, but I didn't think that far ahead. Um, and it does look like it's actually morning, so it is technically the day. Anyway, those um, landing, those runway lights are, are a nice addition. They have been put in a while ago, but yeah. And you can see there's that new, a new building just in front of the science complex with a little, uh, little pond, it looks like. Um, that's the administration building where you can set up programs to sell science and such. Um, but yeah, this has been a, just a really damn good update in my opinion. But anyway, we are on approach and it looks like we're fairly lined up. I am turning a tiny bit, just trying to make sure I'm very well lined up. And I'm going really slowly now. I'm usually coming back incredibly fast because, you know, Ferrum Aerospace doesn't do such a good job of slowing you down. Oh, it is raining rather heavily right now, so um, it might be getting into the audio. But anyway, we're uh, getting very close to the runway now, and I'm doing a little more flaring because obviously I don't want to touch down too fast, although I could touch down like this pretty easily. And holy hell, there's thunder. It's really raining here. Anyway, but we are going incredibly slowly now because it's a very lifty, draggy um, plane. And it looks like I might run off the end of the runway, but I'm going incredibly slowly, so it shouldn't really be a problem. Um, but yeah, anyway, slowing down. We have, uh, we have indeed brought a plane back from, uh, to have brought a plane back from um, space. And if we open the cargo bay, we can see there is, in fact, Bill Kerman in there being mashed into a probe. And it looks like he's been ejected out of the secret door in the bottom of the cargo bay that totally isn't a glitch. Anyway, um, yeah, so that's that's pretty good. I mean, we've brought a probe to and from space and safely brought... He does look like he's walking a bit funny, actually. Maybe, uh, maybe it was a pretty rough ride. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. This has been Chaos People with Tape. I will see you next time. <laughs>